with a uh, kind of amigo focused <laughs> twist. Um, Banshee is the, the media player uh, in the Amigo Netbook edition. Um, it started shipping in 1.0 and it's a little bit updated in 1.1. Some of the stuff that I'm going to show is not in 1.1, but uh, we hope to push it in through an update. So this is, uh, I'll, be I'll be demoing some of the newer features that are uh, pretty exciting. I look forward to getting them in. So um, for those that don't know, Banshee is actually a media player. Um, it's a media player with uh, many different faces. Uh, this is what it looks like in the Amigo panel. Um, so up at the top, you pull it down, and uh, you got a good overview of uh, what's in your library. So you have uh, a great view of, of albums, artists on the left, the, uh, the play cues on the right, the tracks, where you can control the playback and so forth. Up at the top left, um, you can actually switch sources. Um, so you can switch between your music, video libraries, and so forth. And then you can actually launch into the main UI, um, which is more management like focused instead of just uh, playback focused. Um, and it looks like this. So from here, you're sort of a, it's just a traditional looking media player uh, with a lot of the features that you would come to expect from um, a desktop media player. But we did a lot of work to, to actually make it fit really well, um, A, on a netbook screen, but also um, fit into the Nico theme and, and so forth. Um, this is the what the traditional desktop version looks like. You have more screen resolution. Um, actually, I think this picture or this screenshot was actually taken at uh, 1024 by 600. So even the our traditional desktop client looks or actually performs pretty well. It's pretty usable on, on a netbook resolution as well. This is a completely different UI for Banshee. Um, this one is. Uh, <coughs> very focused on, on just finding an album quickly and queuing it up. This was an experimental client. Um, it was partially written in GDK and partially written in, in Clutter. Um, we ended up going back to or, or implementing this version for Migo, but um, this was called Cubano and it, it originally started out with, um, with Migo in mind. This is Banshee running on a Mac. This is basically running on Windows in the form of the, uh, the, Movita, the Movita Media Player um, from uh, Fluendo. So Banshee is it's a very fully featured media player, but it's very customizable, and it has a lot of, of, um, of different clients. Uh, so you would expect um, a lot of the things like uh, just playlist management, um, play cues, uh, metadata, searching, editing, does importing, um, full read and write of metadata uh, across all the formats. Um, just basic stuff you would expect. Uh, here's a screenshot of the play queue. Um, you can shuffle by song, you can randomly fill by song or shuffle by artist and so forth. Um, there's a lot that it does online though, and that's kind of what I'd like to focus on here. Um, we do last FM uh, radio streaming. Uh, so if you have a last FM account, you can subscribe to, or you can play radio stations based on um, on your listening preferences or search for. You can pick an artist and say, I want to I want to listen to songs that sound like uh, <coughs> the County Crows or whatever, and it'll just play radio stations with that kind of music. Um, we have a very very rich podcast experience now. With um, we integrate with the Miro Guide which is sort of a podcast discovery uh, or catalog. Um, this is actually this is Miro Guide. So you, you go to Miro, you kind of browse through um, useful descriptions of playlists or of, uh, of podcasts, and if you find one you like, you, you click the Add Feed to Sidebar button, and it gets added to your, your podcast collection. And from there, you can you know, manage your podcast just like you, you would expect. You can download. Um, individual episodes, you can subscribe to all episodes, you can choose how you want to update episodes. Um, you can, uh, what's really nice about this is you can, um, you can actually stream the podcast instead of waiting for them to download. So if you just want to preview an episode of something, you can begin playing it immediately. Um, most applications, uh, well specifically iTunes, forces you to download the whole thing. So that's kind of nice that we can actually just stream. And then if you decide you want to listen to the whole thing later on your on your iPhone or uh, Android phone or whatever, uh, you can download and synchronize that to a device. 
Uh, here it is playing. I actually took the screenshot last night at the hotel, and the bandwidth was not great, so it didn't even get to buffer yet. But um, when, uh, if, if it's just audio that's playing in this now playing queue, or source up the top left, um, it just shows the album art, and it kind of cycles through um, metadata that's related to the media, but not necessarily video. If you are actually playing video, then the video displays there as well. Uh, recently, we announced support for the Amazon MP3 store. Um, so you can now browse, search, and purchase and download um, music directly from Amazon. We have a, a new Gemendo store as well, and Canonical has been working on integrating their Ubuntu One music store. Um, so soon we should have all three uh, stores integrated inside the application so users can choose um, from where they want to purchase music. We also support the eMusic download format and we'll probably also write a store, an integrated store front end in Dimension for eMusic as well. But um, the way the Amazon MP3 store works is you, it's, it's literally just a browser, but it has, um, we have hooks into the browser to catch MIME types and, and other file extensions. Um, and also, and, uh, so we can do things like preview the stream or preview the music and actually download the AMX files and, and what's contained within. The nice thing about that is that it allows you to also just use your regular web browser. Um, so if you're in Firefox or, or the Mega browser or whatever, and you purchase an album, when you click download in your regular browser, it will the, the AMX or the AMZ file, uh, which is what they give you with your purchase, will launch uh, automatically inside of Banksy and will begin downloading. So you can either use the integrated store or you continue to use your own browser. Um, and so this is a really nice kind of... Uh, a difference on Linux because traditionally it's been difficult to actually purchase music. Um, it was a kind of a really big deal when Amazon originally came out with the um, with their Linux downloader because that was really the first time that A, there was DRM-free music um, available and B, we could actually purchase and download on Linux. And this just takes that a step farther. Um, and additionally, Amazon hasn't actually been updating their their uh, their downloader client. So, uh, so this is fully integrated and working inside of Banshee. Now this is a preview of the integrated Gemendo store as well. Works the same way as Amazon. Um, in addition to that, we've, we support a lot of devices for syncing. So if you plug your phone in, if you plug your uh, MTP player in, your iPod, your Android, um, they'll all work. They all get detected and, and you can synchronize back and forth to and from the device. Um, Works with iOS, which is um, it would be iPod Touch and iPhone devices. It works with uh, traditional iPods, classic Nanos, and um, Shuffles. Um, any standard, any MVP compliant device, which is usually advertised as, uh, uh, works with. I think they it got through a number of names. It used to be uh, Plays for Sure, and then I think now it's like works with Windows Vista. But any device that's branded like that, it's actually MVP under the hood should work. Um, and then any type of USB mass storage device. Uh, we have a, a large catalog of devices, so basically uh, USB uh, vendor and product IDs that that, um, that tell us where to put the files on, a, on any given USB device, what kind of device it is, what kind of icon to use. Um, this is what the Nexus One looks like plugged into the to Banshee. Um, you can see down at the, uh, actually I think I have that up, um, down here. This purchase music uh, category is stuff that I actually purchased through the Amazon MP3 store on my phone, and uh, it's it's categorized separately here. So it just um, it's you can a import everything that you purchased uh, to make sure that you've saved a copy on your device, but it'll also tell you, um, hey, it looks like you might be trying to delete music that you purchased but you didn't yet import. So it just kind of helps you safeguard against the fact that you might lose ten dollars or a hundred dollars. So that's. Um, Polish. Um, this is actually the MP3 store in action. I'm not sure if it'll actually work because we're in Ireland. Um, what happens when you launch the store? Um, it will. We do geolocation based on IP address to send you either to the French store, the German store, the UK store, the, the store in Japan, or the US store. Um, it, this might work because I'm signed in to, with my Amazon MP3 or my Amazon account, which should be bound to the U.S. Um, 
So in testing this, uh, Amazon has daily free songs, so that was great for testing because I didn't have to spend a lot of money. Um, although there were there were a few albums that I spent quite a bit of money on because I was looking for content that had I was looking for AMZ files that had videos, PDF files, and MP3 files so that um, so that we could support all of that and make sure we import it properly because if the user is paying for it, you don't want to accidentally lose their content. Um, We'll start by previewing a song, and the network here is not great, which is typical. Um, and we'll also try to download it as well. And come back to it, I guess. So uh, Banshee is available um, by default in Migo, OpenSUSE, and Foresight Linux. Um, in April, it will be the new default media player for Ubuntu, um, where, it will, where there, the Ubuntu One Music Store will also be featured. Um, and then it's available for any other Linux like, distribution, pretty much. Um, we, we build for OSX as well. Um, so there's a Mac version, you just download the, it's just a dot app, and you just run it like you would expect for any other um, Mac application. And we are still working on getting uh, <coughs> Windows builds out as we produce them as an upstream project. But we kind of put that on the back burner because Fluendo has been releasing Movita, which is based on Banshee. And so um, we've sort of been recommending that if there are Windows users that want to use Banshee, just go download Movita. Um, so they're kind of doing that for us right now. So before we get here, let's see if this is doing anything. So purchase preview. If you want to purchase it, confirm it. The, the streaming's still contacting, but. So here it's starting a download. Um, we'll probably download before it finishes contacting here. But basically, when I clicked preview in the browser, we intercepted the fact that the browser was trying to serve up an M3 playlist with the content. And we instead load that M3 playlist through our regular um, media APIs. So it begins streaming, should begin streaming. Um, through the regular UI instead of uh, the flash. There's normally a little flash app, but we actually intercept the fact that, or we actually claim to handle flash and then replace the flash with just a little preview button, which sends the, which links back to the M3U, which then calls back into the player. Um, so, see, so recently added. This is the song we just downloaded. So, free song from Amazon. This was last night's free song. So, um, so that's never before has that been an experience on Linux. So we're glad to have that finally. <clears throat> so, um, kind of jumping into sort of how it's all put together as an application. Um, First of all, the whole application is built up in many, many layers. It's very, very modular. Um, it starts very low with, with simple things like um, uh, our, our abstraction layer on top of SQLite. Uh, SQLite's used extensively. Every little thing you do in Banshee to query your collection or to build uh, playlists, uh, all the playback navigation is all done using SQL queries. So it's, it, it scales very, very, very well. Um, our initial target, uh, when we started the application was um, a million tracks or a million pieces of data in the, in the database, and that actually is feasible. Um, over time, the queries have become a lot more complex, but the features have also grown immensely as well. Um, but it, it, it scales really well to pretty much anyone's reasonable music collection within you know, tens and tens of thousands of, of songs. Um, so smart playlists are mapped to, to SQL queries. Um, and so forth. Um, but when everything's kind of built at this modular level, um, that gives us the opportunity to, to define different UIs and user, and user experiences um, based on the components that a given UI or UX would require. All, the, all of the actual features in Banshee are actually written as extensions. Um, so the, the, uh, the Amazon MP3 store is, a, is an extension. Uh, radio is an extension, Miro Guide is an extension, podcast is an extension. Podcast and Miro Guide is kind of interesting because the podcast extension is 
it lives on its own, but the Miro Guide extension depends on the podcast extension to feed it um, <coughs> subscription data. Um, so if you, are, if you decide that you want to write a client or restrict features to a client or, or what have you, um, you, you have a lot of, of features at the module level to pick and choose from, and then all of those build up on, on a number of modules um, in kind of a platform, I guess. Um, so it's uh, the whole application is written in C sharp. Um, it's powered by Mono on Linux and OS X, um, and on .NET it runs on on Microsoft.NET, or you can run it on on Mono for Windows as well. Um, all of the media, uh, actual playback and and so forth is is all based on DStreamer, and anything data related underneath data model related is all driven by SQLite. Um, and the project itself is about six years old, so we've built up um, a lot of features, a lot of tests, a lot of performance improvements um, over those six years. It's about 140,000 lines of C sharp, 4,000 lines of C, and to give you an idea of just kind of how modular things are, all of those features and core libraries that the app uh, depends on, it's, you can break down to about 70 modules, or if you're familiar with, uh, with managed code, um, those are actually assemblies. And they look kind of like this, which is a lovely daunting architecture diagram, I guess. But basically, you get a CLR, SQLite, GStreamer, and whatever GUI toolkit you want, kind of on the bottom. Um, we integrate with, with various platforms very, very richly. So on the Mac, we will um, we, we get rid of the GTK menu bar. Um, well, first of all, the traditional Bench UI is a GTK application, um, so it's GTK UI. That, that works really well on the Mac, it works really well on Windows as well. So we, we decided to, for the most part, use GTK on those platforms um, and then integrate um, at kind of the platform level for things like hardware or I.O. layers or um, um, on the Mac, we, we get rid of the GTK menu bar and we actually proxy all the menu up to um, the global menu bar in LSX by way of using the, uh, um, the Cocoa APIs. Uh, similarly, Things like file open dialogs should be native on each platform. Um, so, so things where you really want a native feel is native, but when you're kind of in the application itself, uh, we chose just to use GTK and then to make make the UI look look like it feels it um, on whichever platform uh, you're running on. So on, on Linux, we for hardware we use either UDEV or HAL, depending on how old your system is. HAL was deprecated. UDEV is the, the future, so I would support both of those. Um, virtual file system abstractions, we support um, GIO, GDFS, um, and then there's a, there's a kind of a high-performance POSIX layer as well. The system.io namespace in, in .NET is kind of implicitly slow, um, so we, choose, we only use that backend on Windows because that's their native backend. But if you're running on a Unix system, we use the POSIX IO backend, which is a lot faster. Um, so things like crawling the file system for importing um, is drastically improved. Uh, like that. Um, then above kind of the, the, the system, we have um, we have a bunch of libraries, we call them uh, sort of umbrella projects. Banshee actually, uh, it's a large community um, and there's a lot of code involved, but we've sort of fostered over the years a number of little projects that don't necessarily belong to Banshee itself. Um, these are libraries that other apps can and do use. Uh, Hyena is our big one. That has all of our, uh, our data model stuff that binds on top of SQLite. Um, and it has a couple of nice GTK widgets that are um, there are our, our grid view and our list view and so forth. Um, this grid view up here is it's essentially just a canvas. It's um, but it's all, it, everything is bound directly to the SQL model, um, so data is only pulled in when you when you scroll into view. Um, this is the same widget, but it's just using a, a list layout. And as I'm scrolling, this data is actually being fetched from SQLite. So none of this is preloaded. So, um, so that's, how, that's how it scales really well. But all of these, these are all just GTK widgets um, that, that actually live in, in Hyena. Um, so any application that wants to use that kind of UI binding to various data models can use that. Um, Tagwood Sharp is, is, kind of, is the second sort of really big library that we, 
we started. Um, it was originally a port of the Taglib C++ code to C Sharp. It is not a binding to that. It is, it's its own project at this point, its own source code. Um, but it supports pretty much every media container format under the sun. Um, it, also, it now also supports uh, <coughs> image formats, EXIF, and so forth. Um, full read and write and full test suites to, to, to ensure that we're not ruining your files. Um, Migo, which we actually called this Migo many years before Migo became Migo, um, is just a, a generic syndication library. So it supports Atom and, and um, OKML and, and all those formats. It's used heavily by the podcast extension. I think it's used by the Internet Archive extension. Anything in the app that is going to that needs to consume um, feed-like data is going to use this library. Ossifer is a new library. It's just a, it's a lightweight abstraction on WebKit, and it, it takes care of doing platform integration at the browser level um, for embedding the browser inside of Banshee. Uh, so it takes care of things like making sure that the browser has the same proxy settings as the rest of the application so that uh, you don't get you know, connection problems on one side of the app but not on the other side. Um, and then we have a full Last.fm um, API implementation. Um, it's just a C-sharp library that implements all of the, the web API for Last.fm. So it can do things like uh, log in, get your account data, <coughs> what kind of streams do you have, or radio stations have you um, created. They can actually start streaming the music, and Music Brains similarly is just a. Uh, it implements the uh, the Web API for Music Brains, which is uh, an API that lets you query metadata for artists. So you can give it a query like, I know the name of an artist and part of the name of the album. Give me the rest of the metadata for that album and, and all of its tracks and so forth. So we use that for um, like cleaning up metadata, and we use it for importing audio CDs and, and stuff like that. And the next layer is where kind of Banshee itself actually begins to come together. Um, and we have core APIs for things like uh, creating libraries. And a library can be, it's just another layer on top of, of the data model if it's on SQLite. But it's more of a well-defined function. And these, these are just, again, SQL queries. So if you say you want a new, if you want an audio book library, you, you um, subclass the library source. And then you give it a, a partial SQL statement that says select music or select items that have uh, like an audiobook tag, so it ensures that audiobooks get, class get classified in one way. Um, playback, any kind of queries. Um, on top of SQL, we actually we do a three-way map between this user query language. It's um, called ZSAM user query, but it's very much like the, the query language supported by Google. Um, so you can do things like negation, compound operations, um, different types of string and pattern matching. Um, but it's, it's meant to be sort of, a, if, if, if you don't actually know this query language, you can just type, and it should do a pretty good job at figuring out what you mean. If you do know the query language, then you do a lot of really powerful things in it. Um, so we can go from the user query language to the XML version of that, of, of the query, and from that we, we, we build SQL statements on it as well. So smart playlists, searching, and anything internal that's going on uh, is all mapped in one way to, to this query support. Um, so creating a smart playlist is no different than searching for something. Um, except that, well, yeah, it's actually no different than searching. Um, we persist the query in XML, so you can edit that query, though, in a UI. Uh, we have a full device layer, so you can, it's easy to implement new classes of devices. So, um, so adding iPhone support was just a matter of implementing um, the subclassing the devices stuff. Um, so we have four or five classes of devices. I think I forgot one. We also support the um, Karma devices, which I don't even know if they exist anymore. But um, And then just APIs for transcoding media from one format to another. Um, that's, that's used by the devices. Um, that's used by devices and the audio CD extension. Um, if, you, if, you try to, uh, if you try to sync OGG files to your iPod, to your iPhone, or iPod, it knows that the that, that device doesn't support AUG, so it will transcode to uh, the preferred for, format of that device um, automatically for you. And then there's just a generic playlist API as well. And this is just kind of a sampling of some of the more interesting APIs. But it really starts to get fun up at the extension level where all the little features are built out. And this is just a, a small sampling of some of the bigger features that, um, that Banshee supports. Um, so. 
as you saw on the left hand side, a lot of those sources are actually just extensions. But extensions don't just have to be sources. Um, they can be anything really. They only have to have a UI. Um, like we can uh, bookmarks are is an extension. Um, the fixed metadata extension is pretty cool. But I think I've run it before. Yeah, my metadata is fixed, but if you have, if you import a bunch of stuff from, you know, over the years you might have acquired a bunch of music and the metadata is not exactly right, it can go through and say that, well, this is probably this, these two pieces of metadata differ, but they're probably actually on the same album, and it will prevent, it will present you a list of, uh, of things to fix up, and, and uh, it will actually clean things up for you. So you kind of click refresh, you make a couple of manual changes, or you, you review the automatic changes, and it can clean up your library. Um, and then on top um, of the extensions actually sit the clients. Um, the classic client, which is the you know this UI, is our definitely our most fully featured client. Um, it's been around the longest. Um, you can you can run a classic client as is on, on Mac, Windows, or Linux. Uh, it will just work. It'll give you that experience of, of been demoing. In addition, the actual Amigo client is built on top of the classic client. So here you have a client extending another client, um, and it actually uh, it adds this piece as well. Uh, which I can't get back without the Amigo panel. Um, So the Migo client actually it changes a few things around in this regular UI, um, to, so they fit a little better. The Migo gets rid of the menu bar as well. Uh, Migo apps don't have menu bars, um, so it just kind of reorganizes some things in the UI to make the this UI fit better on me for Migo. But the big thing is it adds that panel that, that integrates directly with Benji as well, so you can access your media directly from the the, uh, the Migo UX. Jumping back. <coughs> um, as I said, that um, a lot of the libraries are, and things that we we'll basically built up over time in Banshee um, are now kind of their own projects, living in their own repositories, taking on little micro communities of their own. Um, so that's been nice to sort of uh, be able to abstract code in such a way that it's it's more reusable for other applications. Um, and it's the big example. Um, whenever we decide, okay, we're going to implement a new feature, it always takes the form of, of an extension. Very rarely do we actually add um, features that a user would really interact with to, to the core. Um, the core work that goes on is basically there just to support big new things at this point. Um, most of the features that, that exist can kind of just grow on their own vertically. Um, So when you write a client, you can say you know you only want to support these, or if you don't want a source-based UI, you can you can forego sources altogether. You can still use them underneath to do your uh, your querying to present UI, but um, you don't have to. Um, so kind of the example is that all of this stuff is GTK, but it doesn't have to be. Um, there's no hard requirement of actually to use GTK. If you choose not to, then you you lose some of the abstractions we have. Um, that, that implements some of the GTK utilities, but in terms of all the data, in terms of all the actual uh, media processing and, and internet service stuff, um, none of that's actually tied to GTK itself. Um, Movita, they have, they're, they're working on a kind of a 3D media center UI that's, um, it's only going to be available on Windows, but it's, it's kind of a, uh, it's an example of it's the first example of someone completely ditching um, the GTK side of Banshee and, and building a new UI on top of all the core. So that'll be neat to see when it comes out. You can get a look at it at movita.com. Um, I didn't put a screenshot on it here because I didn't ask if I could, so don't want to get in trouble. Um, like I said, we integrate tightly with the OS. Um, another good example is just things like power <coughs> management and the screensaver. Um, those are all different uh, across Migo, across GNOME, across KDE, across Windows. Um, 
So we, we implement little like micro extensions extending the, uh, there's like a, an extension for screensaver, um, control the screensaver, disable the screensaver when the, you're in full screen mode or whatever. But then there are platform extensions to that extension that implement actually how to do that in any given environment. So it works differently on Amiga, it works differently on KDE or you know, on Windows. Um, proxies are another kind of problem like that, um, where it seems like every environment has its own way to do proxies. Um, notification there is another one. Um, so the goal is just kind of, in whatever environment we're running on, we want to, we don't want to be sandboxed. Um, we want to actually integrate it the best we can with, with that platform. So, I guess the big, big thing here is that all of it's open source, of course, um, but it's open under the MITx11 license, and we get we kind of get criticized for that sometimes. Um, but the reason we picked that license was because it is an extremely liberal license. Um, it basically says, "Here's the code, do what you want with it." Um, we retain the copyright on the code. So it basically gives us the ability to relicense that code as copyright owners. But other than that, you can, anyone can take the code and pretty much do what they want with it. Like Movita is making a proprietary, um, a proprietary application based on Banshee. And they're more than welcome to do that, and we encourage that. Um, not necessarily encourage proprietary, but um, encourage people to have that freedom. Um, we're very, very much GNOME-centric um, as a community. But again, it's not just a GNOME application. It can be. It is the whole point is it can be. It, it, it's supposed to adapt to its environment. Um, but in terms of community and services or, or and, uh, infrastructure, um, it, it's pretty much all GNOME. So um, we use git.gnome.org, the Bugzilla. The translation teams are immensely helpful. Um, we basically get translations for free because GNOME people like the app, so they translate it. So it's translated in um, probably 40 languages. Um, and that just kind of comes from free as being part of that community. Um, and recently we switched to trying to actually follow the GNOME release schedule, which has been a little tricky, but it's actually working out pretty well at this point. So whenever there's a major GNOME release, you can expect within a couple of weeks, um, I think no more than two, that there will be another major Banshee release as well. And the next major Banshee release will be 2.0, um, which should come out uh, in April, I guess. Um, just kind of some community <laughs> overview things. We and this is over the if you average this out on on a uh, on that six year time scale, um, over that six years we've kept about 32 code commits a week, 10 bugs fixed every week for six years, and this one's my favorite. Um, almost every week we get a new contributor. Um, that trend has continued for six years. You can see there's a little flat part in the beginning. That's probably that's about year one to year two. Um, that's when we did a kind of a major rewrite of the app. It's when we switched to using this whole model-centric and really abstracted platform um, approach. So it took a lot of time, but it was, as you can see, the years after, um, it's been exponentially positive. Um, so well worth it, and um, we continue to grow the community. Um, this was, these are just the contributors. Um, that I grabbed out of Git Master from the uh, the news file. Alan is second in the list. He has a, a name that also starts with an A. I'm first in the list, but it's not because uh, I'm just a maintainer. I'm just, I've always been lucky to have a name that starts with two A's and the last name with a B. Um, someone almost beat me by, they were off by one letter. And they almost got pushed up to the front. Um, the people in blue are, uh, are the current maintainers. So we have four core maintainers and we all kind of get together and decide on release schedule and what major features that we actually want to target at a release and so forth. Um, so I got a vibrant community and so forth. So um, we invite everyone to contribute. Um, can do some more demo, take some questions. We have a little bit of time, maybe five minutes, but um, any questions? Um, do you think the fact that Amigo is starting to basically moved on to uh, Qt. Uh, is it going to have an impact on the fact that Banshee is the media player and it's using Qt? Well, for the, like I said, Banshee is the, the default media player for the netbook vertical for that user experience. Um, I don't anticipate that changing. What I would personally like to see is that we continue to move down 
as, as, a, as a project. Um, we have the ability, uh, things actually perform well on, on small form factor devices from a, from a non-UI perspective. Obviously, we have this big GTK client application. It's not going to scale that much farther from the netbook. Um, so, um, for a smaller device, I mean, I'd encourage a QT UI for you know, your desktop as well. Uh, so, I don't know. For the netbook, it's going to continue to say GTK as far as things are panning out. But, yeah. Any thoughts on supporting any of the other segments? Uh, and then also, uh, what about sort of DLA, uh, network discovery, network discovery content? The, what do you mean by segments? Uh, so non-network. Non so oh, those the different verticals. Um, we don't have any as a community, as a bank community. We don't have any plans to support other other mega verticals. Um, we would definitely help out if someone wanted to. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just a matter of what we end up getting involved in. Uh, technically, nothing prohibits that though. Um, it runs on mono, but mono runs on the iPhone. Mono runs on Android. Um, so mono itself. All the platform and core pieces are more than capable of running on embedded devices. Um, it's just a matter of we would need, obviously, need to build a new UI, and for that, I would encourage uh, you know, someone to look into a Q UI. And you had another uh, of oh, the GNLA. Yeah. Um, there is actually two extensions in, in progress um, to support DLA. <laughs> One is a full implementation of the DLA spec in managed code, and the other is a binding on top of Goofy and um, so I would I would expect the Goofy and Q1 to land sooner. Um, so yes, soon. Anyone else? Come on up. Time. Yep. What about video transcoding? Video transcoding. Um, I don't think we have the profiles, but the the framework is there. It's, it's all part of the. Um, it's all part of. This is, this is a profile for dealing transcoding, it's translated, um, but you basically construct the pipelines. So um, if you, um, it's, it's on the list actually to, to, to write the profiles, um, but it would work the same way. So if you know a device supports um, video of certain types, um, you just flag the, the MIME type and it gets mapped to a profile that needs to be written. But the actual transcoding, um, it, it's all generic uh, through GStreamer. So as you can see, that pipeline in red at the top there, um, that builds out to a GStream pipeline from an S expression. So yes and no. <laughs> Technically, yes, we don't have the profile. So. And two minutes. What else? Uh, by the way, have you checked with the terms of service of Amazon sub So, so uh, if, good question. Yes. Um, the reason we did this is because it's no different than you opening up your regular web browser. Um, this is just a WebKit browser embedded in Banshee. The only difference is that this browser happens to support a couple of MIME types that any other browser would normally receive. So it's not doing anything special with Amazon at all. It's literally just the regular website. Um, we just happen to support the uh, the content that it gives us. I mean, you can go here and um, I mean, I could search for dog, and I could end up buying a dog through through Nancy, but, uh, So there's there's no problem there. All right. So that's Banshee. Um,